Hey guys, so S24 is out and it has some amazing new features. I mean, they're not like a new particle system, but they are super handy. Um, the placement tools, uh, the looping function, the new content browser, all of these things are amazing quality of life improvements. And I'm gonna go over them and you know my favorite features of, our, of S24. And I'll try and keep it short so that, you know, but important. Okay, so the placement tools by themselves are awesome. It's just, it's stuff that I'll be using every day, I think, for placing stuff. Now, um, obviously, I'm sure you've seen some videos of how the placement tools work. It's basically you make an object and let's say it's up here and then you get your, wherever it is, place tool and it'll automatically snap to any surface and you can control drag. Um, it's very handy, but not the coolest thing in here. Um, then you have the dynamic placement, which is also awesome because you make a cube and then you use this to drag it around and it'll dynamically roll in place and you can do it. A bunch of stuff. But the thing is, the cool thing about this is the combination. So next thing is you have the scattered pen tool, which um, you can click and drag and select this. Let's make ourselves a little cube. Let's make this cube nice and small. Um, give it a nice pink material. And then let's use our scatter tool here, scatter pin, to drag it around and place it. Now, while that in itself is cool, but let's turn off the splats and just, there you go, a whole bunch of cubes. What is pretty nuts about this, um, firstly, is that let's press C. And now we middle click this thing and just control click, middle click selects all the children and then control click to deselect the parent. And now we can use the dynamic place tool to move these guys around. And we can, for example, scrunch them all together with this purple one. And you can see that when I'm moving it, it interacts with this stuff. But like for me, what's cool is that if I drag this out, you can see there, you know, they're bundling around this, which is just very convenient. And you can just drag them all down and I, it's super great for placing stuff. And the cool thing about this is that once you've scattered all this stuff, you can scatter with cubes or like this whole dynamic placement, you can just leave it. So once you made it editable, what you can do is you can create a fracture object and then you can just middle click this again, uncheck the scatter objects, you just go to the kids and drag them over into the fracture object. And now this basically makes it into a MoGraph cloner. So now you can go and effect, you can go and get your, wherever it is, your random effectors and you can scale them and you can apply it to these place clones. And the cool thing is the scatter thing lets you place it. Before you could scatter stuff on a single object, but here you can easily scatter across lots of objects and exactly where you want the stuff. And even further, a nice fun little feature is if we turn, if we have these cubes here, right? And they're all based on one cube. So we can just double click on this guy and let's make him a bit smaller. So they're just basically like points, locations rather than objects. And then we can create a cloner and we can use our awesome new content browser. Here you can just type in tree and it'll show you all the trees that come with Cinema 4D and stuff you've added yourself. I'll go over how to do that later, but let's get this coconut palm tree. Let's drag it in here. It downloads it from the internet instantly and you have a coconut palm tree. Click this to close our little new asset browser. And now we have a palm tree here, right? Great. And we can put in the cloner and then let's set the cloner just linear. And let's get our inheritance vector. Inheritance effector and drag our fracture in there into object. And not more promotion, animation, nope. Oh yeah, that's right, direct. And then just crank up the amount of count until you fill them all up. Now, the obvious problem here is that these cubes are kind of, a lot of them lying on the floor, but you could always turn off the align. Um, in the inheritance, you can go, where is it? Parameter rotation, there you go. And ta-da, you have palm trees. And again, this guy can have random effectors on him, so. So random and obviously all the other fun stuff like uh, fields and whatnot. And it's just 
And also, I don't know, the viewport is kind of, I did not expect it to be this fast, but it's very, very snappy. I mean, you just hide the fracture. And, and if you ever don't like one of the palm trees in your fracture object, like right now, see, as you can see, the palm trees aren't on each one, but if you don't like this one, you can just turn off the frac, oops, turn off the fracture object, get this guy and delete him. And then when you turn it back on, when you refresh the cloner, there you go, no palm tree there. So it's like incredibly powerful. <laughs> there are some floating ones here as well. And it's just, obviously there's not enough of these. So we just increase it until, until we have a palm tree on every point. As you can see, it fills up every point. There you go. I have a palm tree on every point. And it's still, look how fast the viewport is. It's crazy, 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 this stuff. Placement, viewport, all this stuff is just nuts. Um, and obviously we can still just get this palm tree and make it. Okay, the scaling is not as fast. I think I was going to switch this to, this wasn't even multi-instance, this is just like a regular instance, multi-instance. And now we go scale, there you go. Pfft. Look at that performance. How great is this populating an island with trees? Crazy. The new stuff they were talking about, oh, there's also a bunch of them down here. Oops. <laughs> so the new stuff they're talking about with the new core and performance and whatnot, it's, it's a lot of them there. Let's turn this off, um, this off, and let's select all of these guys and just go delete these guys. Delete. There you go, turn it back on. And it's just, it, it's mind blowing how fast this stuff is. Now the acid browser, as I mentioned, is also very convenient. This whole searching and finding stuff in it is great. And there's a couple of things that you should do. Uh, firstly, go to edit and preferences and look how fast preferences open. This is crazy. <laughs> I know it's a weird thing to geek out about, but preferences being slow has always been a major pain point for me. Now, so here we go to our asset browser. As you can see, I have a couple of folders. Firstly, you want to change the download location to somewhere else, because if you have it on your C drive, it'll uh, gunk up your C drive real quick. Um, and second, I added my own databases. I added one for Dropbox asset browser. That's the one I'm going to use to or my custom builds and stuff. that's not very heavy, but stuff that's useful that I create to use in my projects all the time. And I'll have it on Dropbox. So it syncs across all my computers and any, and if I, you know, break stuff or, or if something dies, I still have it. And the next one is going to be my FC40 asset browser, which is here, my F drive models. And right now I just have a palm tree in there and it's just going to be on my archive drive. And as you can see, if I, for example, remove this, um, Dropbox asset browser. So if I, um, yeah, if I delete, um, it also disappears here. I lost my, my HDRI fold. I just had one HDRI, but if I drag this thing back in here, boom, it automatically scans it. And it finds my database of models that was in that folder. Um, the only problem is that this does mean as you add stuff to your asset browser, it will double everything. So it will make a copy of it in this folder. So it can't just link to existing stuff on your drive. So there's pluses and minus in this because then, you know, this stuff stopped being useful in other apps. If you're using the same HDRI across many software versions here, you're kind of limiting it. So you have to keep another copy of it for that. Actually, I think, uh, there's a. There's a great program called Connector, which I think may be more useful, especially if you use it between multiple software, which does a similar thing to this manager. But honestly, I never kind of, it, it looks really good. The features are great, but somehow I just never got into using it. Whereas this asset browser already while just testing stuff, I'm constantly just finding stuff on like brick, boom, brick walls or stone and stone materials and some stone candy and whatever. And just, it's musical instruments. It's super handy. This is a, honestly super useful update. And I'm probably going to fill it up with my own content as well, because this just seems like a great workflow process for getting stuff. And it's very snappy and you can add keywords and you turn on this details pane, there's, you know, keywords that you can add to it and you can filter by them and all these searches and I don't know, read the manual, <laughs> check out what others have made. That's a, but this very cool tool. So definitely check this out. This content browser is a huge step up over the old stuff. And also, also, if you type in cartoony, haha, <laughs> free 5J characters. Yep, that's right. Um, you can go and buy the whole thing from our website, or you can open a couple of them right here in the, come to Cinema 4D. Go check out ace studioscom 
for the full pack, but here's some quick cartoon characters if you need them for your project. Next feature, CV tokens is finally built into Cinema. So when you save stuff here, um, save, uh, you have a whole bunch of, you have, especially for me, like I love having seconds and minutes because then when you hit render, uh, you don't have to make a new file. It just saves an incremental file like into your folder. So if you have your folder, which is forward slash renders, then dollar PRJ. And if you underscore um, minute and second to it, right? that's not convenient, well, dollar SS. Then when you render every time, your file will have your project name plus minutes and seconds. So if you're doing iterations, you can then go back and check your progress. And I find that really convenient. For example, when I was making my Milkman, I had a bunch of these little saved versions of it slowly iterating through the, and it's just nice to look back on it and see how, you know, you made progress. The only problem is, of course, this only works if you actually do render to picture viewer. And now that we all use Octane and Redshift, we do that a lot less, but still very convenient. And just a lot of these, I don't remember which ones they added, but um, super handy. Like I always, this is like the main thing that I have to install every time I have a new version of Cinema because and it's great that they built them in. Stuff like resolution and, you know, height and the render engine is very useful stuff. Looping is another super handy feature. We had kind of had looping before. Let's say if we get this guy, his controller. But this is Mia. You can buy her on my website, ace5studios.com forward slash Mia. Fully rigged character. Let's say we just want her to go from one side to the other. Now, so we get her here. And now we have this animation of her moving across. Now, the problem is that she stops. Now, if we go to timeline and we click on this guy, we can go after. And we used to have repeat. So if we do this and we drag the timeline across, but you can see she snaps every time she goes to the beginning, she snaps right back. So if we go to our timeline here, you'll see it just repeats. That was like repeat, that was like oscillate, which kind of works, but it's only works for moving back and forward. And there was also, I think, offset repeat, which kind of <laughs> pushes it, you know, continuously forward. But now we have this really cool thing called loop. And as you can see by default, it's set to 150 frames, but you can drag it all the way down to it. And look how fast the, the timeline works. It's just crazy. So yeah, you can just drag it down. And I say I want it on 43 frames and now it'll automatically bring it back. So it's, yeah, like it just, it, it doesn't, like the oscillate would have uh, made it kind of copy the same thing again. So if we switch now to oscillate, See, so it does kind of, it, it copies it and flips it backwards mirrors. But this one just brings everything, the loop just brings everything back to where it was. So that's very convenient. So you, you know, so it's always possible to loop your animation because at a certain amount of frames, everything goes back and joins back to this thing. So you can, you know, and it even tries to match the angle of your thing the best as can. So very, very, very convenient little looping function for all the loopable videos that are now popular. And one last thing, which I think is again, this quality of life stuff, which just makes everyday life so much nicer. Um, before, if you had, a, if you made a selection, for example, I go UL, UL, and I go select and store selection. I have a shortcut of tilde S on it. And if I, for example, then clicked here and I went again, shortcut tilde S, and I didn't notice this thing was highlighted, it would have replaced this selection. But now my default, it creates a new one. So I keep my old selection and I have my new selection. And if you want to add or replace it, you can just add stuff and then you go update here. So just double click on it or click on it once and then go update. And then you'll have that selection. So also super handy like this. And there's a lot of stuff in this release, which just, I, I love this stuff because it's not, I don't know, it just makes everyday life. Like these, I think all these things that I listed are things that I use very regularly. And they just like, they're not, you know, revolutionary, but they're so useful. Like the placement tools, I do that every day. I place things in scenes all the time and the scatter tool. I mean, yeah, there was other ways of getting it there, but these are just, yeah, great release. Very happy with it. Don't forget to check out my website. It's a Cinema 4D rig. There's Marty and there's Mia and there's 5J pack and there's arms and legs. 
And Maria made a whole bunch of cute cats and animals and ketchup and whatnot. And there's Bob, which you can customize. And there's even a studio light kit, so you can get lighting like I do with very little effort. And just 5G kids and 5 man and just stuff. So yeah, and obviously there's a whole bunch of tutorials in the tutorial section. Don't forget to have a look at that. That's super handy. There's a bunch of stuff about symmetry tools and also there's stuff about crypto art now. So, yep. Uh, it was like say from East Five Studios. Have a good one.